Okay. 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 Well, um, I guess we should um, get this road on the show. We should get this rolling on the ball. <laughs> You're going to keep that in there, aren't you? The amount of wit bouncing back and forth from this tape is unbelievable. Hello, and welcome to the Happy Project Podcast. My name is Becky, and sitting across the table from me is Cedric Sky City, who is also known as my fiancé. Oh, I said it. Yeah, is that like the first? No, we, we announced it on the podcast before. Oh, of course. That's not how I would announce it. <laughs> <laughs> that was very anticlimactic. Yeah, well, welcome to the podcast. This is the Happy Project Podcast. And... Um, Today, we are going to be chatting about something that I guess is not, hmm, not, I don't think it's talked about so commonly, right? Um, and can be hard to put into words sometimes, so bear with us. But we're going to be talking about uh, common things that we hear as to biracial individuals living in this big old world and uh, how some of those phrases, those, those commonly heard statements, just basically what it means to us and how it makes us feel. A little caveat, let's say, tuning in, especially for those who are perhaps tuning in for the first time, is um, we, we'd, we'd hope that all of our listeners keep this a completely safe space, judgment-free zone, because some of you will relate I'm absolutely sure of that. And there are some who's going to say, oh, quit complaining. You don't use the mic to complain, do you? Um, and then there might be those who just have no idea what we're talking about because it's never happened to you before. And if that's the case, great. Um, but this is mostly for those, I think, who have felt as we have felt and haven't been able to find a way to put it into words. And we're going to do our best to do that today. That was, wasn't that good and detailed and vague? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice little disclaimer there. You know, we talk about this all the time, so I think we've gotten better at putting it into words, but we're still figuring it out. So we're still swimming through this whole emotional slash psychological, I guess, uh, uh, context of whenever we hear these phrases. Mm. You know, we're still working through that. It's... um. It's, I don't know, I guess to those that are on the outside that maybe are not mixed race or doesn't know uh, what it's like to be stuck between two different cultures, um, it, it might be a little weird and you're like, why are you talking about it? But yeah. I think if you listen to to us speak and, and to try to explain it, I think you're going to get value in that. You'll understand us more. You'll understand the mixed experience a little bit more. Because I think a lot of people share similar experiences. Mm. You know, uh, there are a couple of Facebook groups that I'm a part of, and I think you might be part of some of them too. As a, just a lurker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there are like different mixed or biracial topic mm -hmm. groups mm -hmm. where most of the people, if not all of them, are pretty much mixed or, you know, between different cultures. And you oftentimes will see these posts about people talking about what we are about to discuss today. Mm -hmm. You know, they might do it in like, in, you know, maybe venting on a post or they might yes. share a meme, a or, meme or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we're just trying to put it into words in a way that um, can bring a little bit more understanding from a uh, non-emotional mm -hmm. standpoint, mm -hmm. even though there's nothing wrong with being emotional about it. I think that'll kind of come out naturally, but we're going to try to make sense of it. And let you guys know how we feel. <laughs> wow, I'm so happy that you put up the meme thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, by the way, I know we keep dancing around exactly what the whole concept is. And it'll make sense when we give you guys some examples. But uh, bringing up that meme concept, uh, the reason why I feel like these kind of conversations and discussions are important is because we have seriously nuanced cultural differences that exist sometimes within the exact same individual, 
your balancing act. You're trying to discover or figure out, okay, what is this mixed race identity? I'm not, I'm not making heads and tails of it. I'm not really getting help from anywhere. And so you seek out those who perhaps share uh, similar experiences with you growing up, hoping to have some kind of discussion. And we mistake venting and mistake making light of these situations as conversation. Mm -hmm. So someone puts up a meme and you're like, oh my gosh, I totally get it. Oh, ha ha ha. So clever to use uh, SpongeBob to explain how I feel. And then everyone laughs and shares. Oh my gosh, this is exactly it. But this is not really diving into or breaking down or understanding really what's going on. The feelings or the the, the, the cultural implications or your own personal experiences. And so while this is happening simultaneously, I also feel that we have people who are like, enough talk about mixed race, for goodness sakes, everyone on the planet is mixed race, what's the deal now? Which I also see very commonly, mm -hmm. which is gaslighting these individuals who have something inside, something, ah, I don't know, can't, how do I say it, who do I talk to? While this also... The, let's say the the quote-unquote public psyche is saying like what's the big deal everyone's mixed race anyway so there's not an issue you're making an issue out of nothing right yeah. so i feel it's like this weird mid zone um that i've been existing in and then finally was like actually there is something that needs to be said and we should have these conversations and it does still bother me and i would like to talk about it therefore we're doing that now yeah you yes. put it well and i don't think we need to be apologetic about it you no, know, because like no. it's our feelings are our feelings. You know, they're valid. <laughs> I'm learning. Uh -huh. I'm learning about feelings you, and you how are. to express my feelings. Yeah. And so this is a good thing. So we just hope that everyone who is listening or watching, if you're watching on YouTube, mm. uh, if you could just uh, sort of be our, I don't know, our, our listening ears and try to understand. Sure. Um, yeah. From an empathetic s standpoint. Yes, that would be great. That is the key. So why don't we just throw out an example of of this kind of this topic that we're trying to get a grasp of, and I think you know that will give people a better idea of the context from which we are, I don't know, exploring what we're exploring right now. Um, okay, so both of us, it's very clear we're half Korean, and we're currently living in South Korea. So no doubt we run into a lot of people who are not like us, who are in fact full Korean, who have lived and grown in Korea their whole lives. So we have these different um, backgrounds or experiences or expectations of ourselves. And um, as mixed Koreans, something that, and I know I'm speaking for both of us in mm -hmm. this case, but we oftentimes come into scenarios or circumstances where we are reminded of our otherliness, otherness, our, our outsideness. Our alienness. Our alien. I mean, people don't point out the green skin and triple eyes <laughs> all the time, but but we have like, a, you know, the, it's apparent, I think, to many Koreans who see us, oh, mm, okay, not, not full Korean, what are you, right? And um, the thing that, so one of those things that is constantly a reminder of our otherliness is uh, language. Mm -hmm, language yeah. is, a, is a very big one. Uh, language how how can i say this language is um very key to understanding people societies cultures uh your own self your own family and um language in korea obviously language is korean and when we are trying to speak korean fluently we're trying to be a part of this greater conversation and cultural psyche and we find that we're constantly shut out either because of lack of Korean fluency or weird expectations we put on ourselves. Or um, another thing is the patronizing comments of, oh my gosh, you speak Korean so well, but not really accepting you as Korean. I think I threw a whole lot of things into one statement here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're able to untangle sure. this I mean, tangled web I sent you. Yeah, there's, there's many different uh, routes we could take with this conversation and yeah. perhaps we'll, you know, get to those different paths. But why don't we just start with how it makes us feel whenever we hear the phrase, you speak Korean so well. Well, you really made it simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not really easy to put into words, but let's just start with one uh, phrase okay. and then let's just, let's just break it down from there. So whenever, for example, depending on the context, whether I'm out and about at a restaurant or I'm in a group where there's a, a bunch of Koreans, say some sort of event or something mm. like that, and I'm being introduced, 
uh, to a group of people that I haven't met who are Korean, and I say, 안녕하세요, yeah. which for those of you that don't know, it means hello. It's a yeah. greeting in Korean. Uh, <laughs> what, what is really interesting and what I've only found to have uh, – To, to happen in Korea or in the context of Korean language, maybe you can um, verify this or not since you're, you know languages better than I do, but people like ourselves who are mixed Korean or even like foreigners especially, whenever, whenever you say 안녕하세요, like a greeting, a lot of times Koreans will say to them or to me and to you, oh, you speak Korean very well. Mm. They'll say that in Korean, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because you literally say the very first thing that you're supposed to learn mm. in any language. Most languages, you'll learn how to say hi, bye, those simple things. Yeah. So literally the most basic thing you can do or say in a language mm. is hello, and then you're being complimented, mm. which on the surface is great. Yeah. You know, but for me, it makes me feel, well, You know, it used to make me feel a little upset, mm. not at that person, but at the fact that it's like, but I literally just said one word. Mm -hmm. Why, why even say that I speak Korean well? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you didn't even hear me speak a sentence. You didn't yeah. hear me have a conversation with you. Uh, because I guarantee you, like once we do, you, you will change your mind. <laughs> you know, if I actually had a conversation with you in Korean, you'll, you'll find out quickly that's not as, as good as you, you know, initially think. So... For me, it, it used to make me upset. Now it's more um, it's more annoying. But again, well, why does it make you upset? That that's the crux sure, of the matter. Sure, but let me say this because you know I don't want anyone to misunderstand me. Yeah, I'm not upset at that person. Sure, I'm not taking it personal as if like they're attacking me or they're saying anything wrong. But the way I'm receiving it is, oh. You speak Korean well because you're someone who is not Korean and I see you speaking the language. Yeah. Which the Korean language is only the national language of Korea. Yeah. Right? So Korean is not like a, a language that's shared across the world. So it is, historically, it's, it's, it's been uncommon for people who are not Korean to speak Korean. Sure, so sure. that's obviously still sort of the, uh, I guess, sort of the feeling you get. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Koreans here is they're still surprised when people who are not Korean mm -hmm. or perceivably Korean, you know, speak the language. They're like, oh, they speak so well. But for me, it just kind of makes me feel a little annoyed. And I guess the reason is because it reminds me of my alienness, mm -mm. my otherness. The mm -hmm. fact that even though I'm half Korean and I feel like, uh, <laughs> let me say this cautiously, I feel like I should be accepted as a Korean just as much as I should be accepted as a black man because I'm mixed. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, two cultures that I'm represent. Mm -hmm. I I don't need to be reminded that I'm different. Yeah. I think that's what annoys me and bothers me. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. And yeah. we don't, I mean, you already said it. We can't hold that individual, like, you made me feel upset yeah. by your comments. You, we can't do that, of course. And, and from the other perspective, it's like, oh, I'm complimenting you on your Korean skills. Because, right. And like, they mean well know. by it. Yeah, of course they mean yeah. well. No one's, you know, trying to say you speak Korean well and inside. They're like, I hope this, <laughs> I hope this hurts you. Right. Like, we understand. It, it's sort of honestly, uh, you know how in, in, in the West we have certain ways of doing small talk. You know, yeah. how's it going? Uh, yeah. Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, in Korea, I think when it comes to foreigners, mm. I think that's one way of Koreans to, to have some sort of a small talk. Sure. It's a small talk, uh, I guess, dialogue or yeah. phrase that they can say yeah yeah um and and also at the same time they feel like they're complimenting you yeah so uh most of the time it's never in a demeaning way right right but again we're talking about how we feel as half koreans as this half is koreans. important to note because right. there is a difference with hearing that phrase as somebody who is not part korean yeah and someone who is because say that you're, you're not You don't look Korean. You don't have any Korean parentage. You you have no um, you know blood ties to Korean culture or this country, and you come here and you speak Korean very well. And someone says, "Whoa, you speak Korean really well." You say, "Thank you," because I mean, in that case, obviously, I wouldn't know fully, mm -hmm. but it is a sense of you you worked for this. Yeah, you had to really work for this, and you know, no one had an expectation that you would. Cool, you speak Korean well, but when as you come as uh, someone who's half Korean and you feel a, a guilt or a burden 
or responsibility to yourself and your people. Sure. As in, I am Korean and I don't speak Korean per- perfectly. Or I am Korean and you think I don't speak Korean perfectly. Right. And it's, it's this weird, nuanced sense of, in, in my case, it was self-loathing. Sure. Like, I'm just so ignorant. I'm so stupid, I can't even speak my own language. Like, it, it reached that kind of point. And every time someone said, like, oh, you speak Korean really well. And I knew I didn't. Yeah. I didn't speak at that level of perfect fluency as I should have. I was supposed to. It was, it was supposed to. I had to. Then it would... It was constantly this cycle of self-abuse. Like, you are so stupid. You didn't study. You didn't learn Korean when you were young. It's all your fault, and you were supposed to. It was really, it's a very weird, uh, poisonous view of yourself. And I think especially when it's reminded in the constant conversational basis with every single individual you meet, it can really bring you down. When it's, you know, it's not of their fault who is saying that to you. Right. But that is the internal struggle. (laughs) It's so funny because you have a whole spectrum of half Koreans and their Korean level. Like you can be offended at any part of the spectrum from the side of the spectrum of you're half Korean and maybe you don't speak as well and someone says you speak Korean well. Mm -hmm. That can be taken like, oh my gosh, but I I don't speak. Like basically what you were saying. And I'm sort of in that zone too. I mean, I don't don't think I'm at the point of abusing myself, but I certainly feel bad. Yeah. Um, and you know it because that's, I, I air out those grievances to sure. you. Um, and now to everyone listening. Uh-huh. But then you have the other spectrum of, let's say you're half Korean and you speak it native level. Yeah. You know, whether you grew up in Korea or you just grew up in a Korean house or, or a household where a Korean was spoken, whatever the case is, you're literally just as good as any other Korean. Mm-hmm. And then someone says, oh, you speak Korean well, that can also be taken. Of course. Like, well, why wouldn't I? R- exactly. Right. So no matter where you fall on the spectrum, I think there is a, w- a way to be offended or to feel <laughs> down or a little upset or annoyed. Yeah. I mean, there's another side as well to that Ooh. where this has happened to me also where I'm not speaking Korean perfectly. Uh, and this is mostly from family members. <laughs> where I'm not speaking <laughs> Korean perfectly and they'll be like, what is wrong with your Korean? How come you don't speak Korean well, right? Mm -hmm. That's another like, oh man, (laughs) (laughs) why? What's wrong with me? It feels weird because it's almost like you you just can't win. Um, And it's honestly, it really boils down to this expectation versus what you look like. Mm, Yeah. You know, you don't look fully Korean. You're speaking Korean well, great. Wonderful. We're so proud of you. But you're like, yeah, but I should have been speaking Korean well in the first place anyway, regardless how I look, because I am half Korean. Right, exactly. But let's say you're half Korean that looks pretty much full Korean and no one could ever tell you that, you know, or could tell that you're half Korean. Uh, You're, you know, you're you're not going to get that phrase if you're able to speak Mm -hmm. Korean, Mm -hmm. you know. You'll probably, on the flip side, if you look full Korean and you start speaking Korean and it's not that great, you might get a little criticized. Yes. You know, like, oh, I thought you were Korean. Why couldn't yeah. you speak Korean well? Yeah. Which is a whole other you set know, of problems. it's so weird. And the thing is, I think a big part of this conversation does have to do with language, but I think there's a bigger underlying reason for it because the language is so sacred to the korean culture hmm. in many different ways but it's you cannot separate or i'll say this it's hard to separate in the minds of many koreans and even in my mind too it's hard to separate korean language from the culture of korean like Absolutely. it's it's so intertwined and that that's applicable to a lot of cultures with yeah. their own language but it's you know, like I, I would have to wonder, and this is me sort of speculating here, but I would, I, I would wonder how a full Korean would view a, maybe a second generation full Korean American Korean Canadian mm-hmm. Korean New Zealand, uh, what do you call them, New Zealander? A, a New Zealander? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, <laughs> if if you guys know out there, let us know. Uh-huh. But um, like. What was my point? Yeah, where, where are you going <laughs> with know. that? I don't are know. you saying that, like, you know, native Korean who's born and raised in Korea would see Isede somewhere else and then who doesn't speak Korean? Right. So, like, so would the would the Korean look at the... Uh, again, Kyopo. Yeah, the Kyopo as Korean. Sure. Considering all things are equal... You know, but but don't speak the language, right? Would they look at them as truly Korean? And the uh, and, and yeah. the reason is because because again the, the the language is so tied into the culture. Sure, yeah. 
I would venture to say it would the the Korean would have a hard time seeing the the Korean kyopo or the Korean that lives overseas uh-huh. as fully Korean. Uh-huh. And it's it's understandable why they they yeah. would likely see the the kyopo that way. Yeah. But it's just it just goes to show just how much the language is so um, tied to the culture. Well, language everywhere. And this is, of course, not just pertaining to Korea, but but language is is somewhat of a a very obvious indication to people of your belonging. We have all these different factors, or let's say outside badges that we wear that signify where I belong. Mm. Oh, I have this badge where I look ethnically fully Korean. Ah, you belong in the Korean category. Congratulations. Or you wear the badge where you speak the language fluently. Ah, you belong with this community because you all speak the same language. There's This is a very natural thing, part of human nature, you know, finding that similar factor of connecting. And Korean language is, like you said, unbelievably intertwined. It's, it's so... Um, central to Korean culture and understanding and context and history and and the value that's placed in Korean language because people fought to keep the Korean language alive. Um, yeah, so there, I think it is really difficult to separate the concept of being Korean with being able to speak the Korean language. Right, and that's, that's understandable. I'm not yeah. suggesting that it should be the other way around. But it is just the simple truth that that's that's how it is, and I think that is linked to how people view mm-hmm. uh, people like us who are half Korean. Yeah, because it is so tied into, um, I guess, what it means to be Korean. Yeah, yeah, it's such an interesting thing. You know, I, I was thinking um, about the the fact that it is the fact that we're half Korean that we feel this way because mm. I know that I, I've heard other foreigners or people who live in Korea who are not Korean. Talk about the fact that, yes, whenever they say just one or two phrases, they they get the same comment. Oh, you speak Korean well. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem to, it doesn't hit them the same way it hits us. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when when I'm in, for example, like when I visited Japan, I just, you know, I learned survival Japanese. And what I mean by that is I learned how to say hello and, and thank you and goodbye. So like for me, like it wasn't a thing because like, I knew this wasn't my culture. Yes. So I didn't feel the same way. I didn't even feel bad. It's just like, I'm going to try my best and I'm going to try to respect the culture yeah. and, you know, say hello and goodbye and thank you. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I was only there for like three days. Um, but for me, I, I did not feel the same way. So that's why, like, when it comes to my own culture, like, there's just this deep rooted emotional attachment to, yes. to whenever I hear these comments and, like, just feeling bad or not feeling bad, but like being reminded that I'm different mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'm viewed as different because like internally I'm, I feel like I'm both internally at the end of the day. But the fact of the matter is I know that that's not the perception for a lot of Korean people. Um, and it's funny because on the black side, I feel way more accepted Far, there's 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 a, a a smaller barrier to entry mm-hmm. for I think uh, half black people mm. um, because like they they take you in and you're like you're one of us mm-hmm. you know what I mean but I don't feel that same way with with Korean people mm. in general mm-hmm. yes with some I do because there are I'm not saying all Korean people are like this but yeah. there are some Korean people that will like oh you're half Korean then you know you're Korean mm-hmm. um, yeah but I I, I I just I find it funny that there's that difference between both of at least my cultures. There is. Mm-hmm. There is a difference for sure. Uh, you know, it's funny in Korea, I've reached a point now with my Korean speaking where on one hand, I do acknowledge that, hey, I can get around, you know, I can handle business meetings, conversations, no problem. And maybe let's say 80 to 90 percent of the time, if people aren't looking closely, I'll just slip right by. As mm-hmm. like, oh, kind of, you you know, kind of like, um how do I say it? More like looking more exotic Korean, <laughs> right. right? Oh, she must did surgery or something. You know, like I could just slip by mm-hmm. um, in most circumstances. Can I slip by? No, you can't slip by. <laughs> Unfortunately, true. you can't slip by. But with my Korean skills and how I look and depending on how I was dressed and my makeup and everything, I can just slip right by. And then other times I can't where they stop me and they say... Like, you're not one of our country people, right? That's how they say it. 
And then then it's like, well, okay. Then you have to do the whole explanation, this kind of thing. Or I'll have circumstances where they'll look at me and they're just like, okay, you know, like Korean something, something, something. Then they see my name. Say, Becky? Becky? Is this your name? I said, yeah, that's my name. They're like, oh, I... Wow, I thought you were Korean. I'm okay. I'm sorry. And then maybe try to speak English to me or something. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's well, happening? Well, we were here? speaking Korean for the past thirty minutes. Yes, but <laughs> it's it's always to me it's some kind of weird something when it tips the person mm-hmm. off. I feel like an an imperceptible shift yeah. in how they view me. And uh, for example, I was on the phone earlier because I was making an appointment and I made the appointment in English because, I mean, the appointment page was in English for some reason. Actually, I don't know why it was. And so I, I sent my appointment in English, everything I wrote in English. The person who calls me is speaking in Korean. And I says, um, is, is this Becky? And I said, yes, this is Becky. And they're like, no, no, I mean, is, is Becky there? I said, oh, well, I am Becky. And they're like, oh, oh okay did you make an appointment under the name becky and i said yes i'm becky i made that appointment for myself and they're like i'm sorry i just i didn't know you were korean because i'm speaking in korean and to in their hearing it sounds like a korean person (laughs) right and i was like okay uh, you know what what do i go after this i say yeah of course whatever and it's just it's very interesting to see how how people perceive you and it feels like a big um let's say not a stumbling block, but a little hitch in the road to, uh, to viewing an individual as a Korean equal is that language. Right. And if the language is going well, they're fluent, it's apparent, it's like, oh, we, we don't have to worry about those other things. But then they're like, oh, you don't speak Korean fluently. And this will happen to mid-conversation where my Korean's not perfect. Mm-hmm. Then they'll be like, ah, you are Weigukin. It's like, why you got to point that out? I, I know. You know what, I mean? what was that for? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, twist the knife a little bit. Right. Yeah. And it is, it's just, um, it's very something you're constantly aware of. Mm-hmm. And that's why it makes it scary, I think, for a lot of half Koreans to learn Korean. And hard to talk to their parents yeah. when they learn Korean. Yeah. Um, you know, one more thing that I actually just thought about when it comes to language. Yeah. Um, which, which I guess further validates why it's so important to the Korean culture is, and we talked about this on the podcast uh, a good while back, is the honorifics that's built into mm-hmm. the language. And like when, it, it's funny because if a Korean person who can speak at least decent English to at least have some sort of a conversation with you, if you start talking to them in English and that's how the conversation starts, then it pivots to Korean, then the dynamics switch Yes. to like, you know, you're having a casual sounding English conversation yeah. and then you switch to, to Korean. Then it's like, like super formal. Yes. You know? And so uh, it's just, it's just something in the minds of, I think, Korean people when it mm. comes to the Korean language. And I think they view the world uh, well, I mean, they don't view the whole world through the lens of the language, but I think that's a big part of mm-hmm. how the world is viewed because, uh, you know, to someone who is older or someone that's in a higher position, um, they're going to speak a certain way, Mm-mm-mm. you know? So, like, that's just, they're so used to, Korean people are, are very used to uh, just associating language with how they interact with people. And mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why, for us, in their minds, because we don't, look Korean or we may not speak as fluent Korean, that's where those comments come from. Yeah. From just that perception of how, how language or how they view life through the language even. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, so that's all I wanted to say on that. Have, I, I just have, thought okay, about This it. is actually a really good one I wanted to bring up too then. Have you experienced where you, let's say it's me, I'm with an, a Korean friend and we're talking to the Korean manager. Mm-hmm. Korean manager, I didn't say anything yet. And the Korean manager says to my Korean friend, Oh, 안녕하세요. 와주셔서 감사합니다. Very formal, formal, formal. Mm-hmm. And then we'll look at me. And then um, either they'll just say flatly in English, like, hello, okay, yeah, good to have you. Or in informal Korean. Oh, oh. oh 친구도 왔네요. And it's like, um, I understand everything you're saying. Am I on a different level than you? right? Suddenly, it's it's almost like you're not uh, worthy of the respect of the language 
I don't know if you experience. Have you ever experienced this? I've been to many scenarios yeah. or where I'll come in and they see me and then I'll start speaking Korean and they'll be like, ah, oh, ah, oh, 그래요, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And then, but they mm -hmm. don't treat me with the formalities that they would treat another Korean person. Right. Like the Korean language to me is suddenly, oh, oh casual, turn it down because she's not really Korean. Mm -hmm. Right. She won't get offended. And uh, I, will, I will experience that sometimes. Um, and I do get offended. I mean, when they do I mean, treat rightfully me so. casually. Rightfully so, I think. Yeah, but again, it's because it's very built into the language. Exactly. And yeah. you know, just by how they're speaking to you. How they view you. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So that that is understandable. But, you know, it happens to me a lot with you. Because, like, if... <gasps> yes, it does. Yeah, because, like, most of the time, they'll, they'll just keep speaking to you. I mean, you can think of countless different contexts we've been in. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I mean, obviously, to be fair, your Korean is far better than mine. But if I'm in a position where I, I am speaking Korean mm -hmm. and you're speaking Korean, they're going to look at you. Like, I feel it all the time. I know how to, like, sense it and mm -hmm. to look for it, even when I'm not trying to actively look for it. Yeah. It happens with you all the time. Yeah. I was just looking at you, speaking to you. Yes. Asking something that they should ask me, but they ask you. Yeah. Things like that. I know. <laughs> so. In that situation, what do you want me to do, actually? Because, I mean, sometimes, usually I just, like, respond. But there have been cases where I just, like, stare at them blankly until they look at until you respond i mean i'm cool you just handle it <laughs> less talking for me to do no you need to practice <laughs> yeah yeah that's true yeah or, or how about this one okay when um i did i tell you when i went to that cafe that one time and uh it was me and my friend who is not korean she doesn't speak Korean. And we went up there and she ordered something. Oh, can I have, you know, grapefruit juice? And he was really excited to speak English to her. He said, grapefruit juice. Okay, yeah, I can get you grapefruit juice. And, you know, he wasn't speaking English perfectly. Well, mm -hmm. fine. And then I came up and I ordered in Korean. And and then he's like, what? What? Oh, you told me and about that. And I was like, <laughs> uh, I would like a latte, please. And he said, uh, what? What do you, what do you want? <laughs> In, you know, in not perfect English. And I'm speaking to him in Korean. And I was like, is this, am I, what is coming out of my mouth right now? And then I, I was like, and then I said to him in Korean, I'm speaking in Korean right now. You can speak to me in Korean. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. No understand. And it was just mind boggling. I, I didn't know what that meant, what happened. And, and um, the more I thought about it, the only explanation I could come to is that his visual senses were telling him not Korea, not Korea, not Korean. And it was so strong that no matter what he was hearing, no matter what was coming out of my mouth, he just insisted on me being not Korean. It was bizarre. That just literally reminded me of the movie we just watched. What, uh, what? Uh, about the emotions? What was that called? Inside Out. Oh, yeah, Inside Did Out. Did you just like, see my anger? Girl, girl, girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just in your in his brain, it's like oh, not Korean, not Korean. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and he was looking at me blankly, and I I was like, oh, 저기 저 한국말 한국말 얘기하셔도 돼요. You know, 괜찮아요. 저 이해하니까. And he was like, no, understand. <laughs> Well, what is that? I'm laughing now, but that would have honestly made me so upset. It made me so mad in that moment. And then afterwards, when I left, he said, oh, goodbye in Korean. And I was like, okay, thank you. Bye. You should have been like, peace out. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. And, you know, on one hand, I think some people could be listening and be like, come on, guys. It's just a joke. Calm down. I get it. Yes. But when this is your daily constant life. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I want to bring up for people who do say like, oh, he was just joking. He just wanted to practice his English. You can make excuses for another individual's behavior, but it does not uh, invalidate how a person felt in that scenario and that situation this is why we have these false positive affirmations like oh don't cry it's not a big deal but i'm crying right you're not acknowledging my sadness this is the situation that we're, we're trying to <laughs> bring it up here and thankfully we now can look at these situations with humor you know this is yeah. i think significant because we've studied a lot we've learned we've thought a lot we've been through this and we hope that we can always address misunderstandings with compassion and understanding right and I just want to say, again, you know, we're, we'll throw out as many disclaimers as we need to. We're not saying that the other side is wrong. No. we're Most of the time, they're not. We're not saying they mean to annoy mm -hmm. us. But the fact of the matter is, it makes us feel a certain way. And this is why. And this is what we're trying to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that, you know, those of you guys that may not understand could have a better chance at understanding why we, why sometimes we... 
not complain, but we mention this and we sort of vent. Yeah. This is why, because it's very important for us because identity is something that is one of the most important things, I think, to anybody, like a sense of belonging and sense of knowing who you are, yeah. especially in the context of a group. Yes. And for us, this directly affects that sense of identity mm. every time it mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. And if it happens on a, for us, it happens on a weekly basis. Daily at least, basis. Like, yeah. Like, if I'm going out and talking to people, yeah. Yeah. So like, even like the last time that happened to me was two days ago uh-huh. when I was on a shoot. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? That happened two or three times by like different people. Yeah. So it's just something that we just hope that people would understand. And, you know, I, I would imagine that there will be a time where this won't even, we won't even have to talk about of this, course. but it's probably going to be a while. Yeah. It's going to be a good while because I think this is just so like Korea is just still in, in a place where even though foreigners especially in the city areas, are not as novice as they were even just 10 years ago. Mm -mm. It's still like a very elementary uh, stage of knowing how to interact and view people who are not Korean and Mm -mm. how to, you know, treat them in Mm -mm. a sense. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that like because Korean people were treating foreigners badly. Not not at all. I'm just Mm -hmm. saying because the world, Korea, Korea is opening up more and more. It's Mm. becoming more global and it's happened so fast. So I think it's just time... we, we just need to give it time to catch up, basically. Sure, of course. And the yeah. best thing that I've recognized is how much understanding that I, I believe um, many Korean people have, as in willingness to embrace. Yeah, It's just we're trying to get over miscommunications, misunderstandings, yeah. uh, false beliefs about each other, and uh, biases and prejudices. We're trying to get rid of all of that, but... I think in the heart of hearts, people want to connect. People want to embrace and, hey, be part of the community. It's just we're learning together. That's, I That's mean, this is really point. it. That's a very good point. And I will say that um, I think Korea as a whole, if you just zoom out and look at it from a macro, macro perspective, look out on the culture, you could see that it is heading in the right direction. Whether mm. it's at the speed that people like or not is another story. Mm. But it's heading in that direction. Mm-hmm. And I think because Korea sort of has to to face this because it's becoming more multicultural, more multicultural fam- yeah. families are establishing themselves here in Korea yeah. versus 20 years ago where it wasn't as common. Sure. Yeah. So I think I think it's only a matter of time. Yeah, and that is why we're having this public yeah. discourse. I know we're going to have some people who tune in and be like, give it a rest. <laughs> is this all you guys talk about? Well, yes, this is what we talk about. Why? Because when you're trying to change the public conversation, when you're trying to to lend a voice to people who have been voiceless for a very long period of time, mm-hmm. And trying to reach an understanding and communicate, you have to say things again and again and again and hash it out and hash it out and learn more from each other and try to understand. That way it becomes a central central concept that people just accept. Yeah. It takes time and it takes conversation and... That's what we're doing. Right. And it's so lovely that other people can be part of this conversation. And the crazy thing is, and when you when you think maybe from some perspective, like, okay, we all know, we all know, blah, blah, we all know. Then you're going to have someone who comes in and be like, <laughs> right. I never knew this. <laughs> right. You know, where was this 10 years ago? Yeah. There are some facts that we believe as a society, as a whole, are undeniable truths about individuals. There are some facts that all of us have somehow reached a point and said, oh, yeah, we believe this and this and this about people. And we don't, it's so Im- implicit now. But at some point, those facts had to have been explicitly said. Exactly. And we are reaching that direction. But we have to explicitly discuss it, which is what we're doing now. Again and again and again and again. Until it's become an implicit understanding. That's just how humans view each other. Right. And we're not asking you to agree with us. We would like for you to. But we're not asking you to. Right. We're asking you to listen to us and to try to understand where we're coming from. Mm. It's okay to disagree and to look at things a little differently or even a lot differently. That's yeah. totally okay. But we have to get used to having these discussions without ripping each other's heads off yeah. or accusing each other of being insensitive or like uh, criticizing. Mm-hmm. You know, Or gaslighting. Yeah. Like, this is not important. Exactly. Yeah. And so 
so that's all we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And not once, and we want to go on record. And for those of you guys that have listened up to this point, great. Because there are always people who don't listen to the whole thing and watch the whole thing. Sure. But at this point, we've never once criticized people or said they're wrong for doing this. Right. We're, we're trying to come from a place of understanding. Mm -hmm. But again, we're just talking about how we feel. Mm. And we have a right to feel how we feel. You know? Yeah. Hear, hear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that. I feel like I've been climbing higher and higher on this soapbox until I'm just looking over the whole world on a box <laughs> of soap. I need to come back down, guys. But uh, I love having this conversation and this discussion. And I... I um, even though it started out with just like, oh man, this is how we feel when we hear these certain phrases. I think it is, yeah, because it's, it's directly connected to a sense of identity and without understanding or acceptance of self as you are and, and trying to work through all of that, you're gonna have a really hard time interacting with the world around you, you know, and knowing who you are places you at what standing you are with others. And so it is very key to accept and understand yourself. So when you're hearing constantly these things like, oh, well, why didn't you speak Korean better? You should speak Korean. Or, oh my gosh, you can speak Korean so well, but you don't. And it's just very like conflicting mm -hmm. and it can be very emotional and trying. When you fully come to an acceptance, like, oh, okay, well, this is here I am. This is who I am. This is how I know I want to be. Those things won't affect you as strongly. Um, but as you can see, even with us, though this is, you know, our bread and butter, talking about these things and working through these things and learning still we are affected strongly by that so it's basically saying like it's okay <laughs> we mm -hmm. understand how you feel if you also have that feeling of not feeling like you fit in right yeah totally yeah i don't know where else you wanted to go with that because we had you know a whole list of things we were hoping to hash out and talk about but we always end up primarily on language somehow because it's right you know it's very key and crucial yeah i mean i guess there's there's um because of time i mean we could i, I feel like if we bring up another topic it'll yeah. be another you know 40 minutes or mm -hmm. so but uh, a couple of things that I had in mind, though, uh, not for us to dive deep, but just just to make the connection that this, it's all related is, you know, we hear the phrase, oh, you speak Korean so well. It's very similar to the phrase of, um, oh, you know how to use chopsticks. Oh, sure. Or you use chopsticks so well. Same mm -hmm. sort of concept uh, or or being asked whenever we're at a restaurant and we order something spicy Oh, you know it's spicy, uh -huh. right? Or can, <laughs> right? Or yeah. can you eat spicy food like yeah, that? Right. And again, it's it's there's no need to go deep into that because it's all the same thing. Yes, it's all the same thing. It's just like reminding us of our otherness because they're like, oh, because the, the perception is with even within Korean people that Korean people as a whole can eat spicy food, which is generally true. But there are a lot of Korean people who don't like spicy food, mm -hmm. and to assume that maybe I'm not aware that something is spicy, one is telling me, oh, you probably think that I'm not, I don't know what I'm ordering, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I've, I've been eating this my whole life, you yeah. know what I mean? And also it, it reminds me of, again, they think I foreigners can't handle spicy food, mm -hmm. which that's in and of itself is a whole nother topic because Korea is not the only culture with spicy food. Mm -hmm. There are many cultures with spicier foods, you know, so there's... There's so many different things that we hear on a day-to-day -day basis that all ties into what we talked about with language, yeah. I think. The identity thing. Mm -hmm. It's weird, though, because it's like y we throw this all out here and then we're like, okay, guys, it's okay. But how do we move past that? Because mm -hmm. I feel like you, you also can't say like, oh, well, in order to overcome this, you have to speak Korean fluently and then people aren't going to look down on you. Because that's not the answer either, frankly speaking. And, and also neither is it to be bullheaded and say, I don't need to speak Korean to be Korean. I can speak whatever I want and I'm 100% Korean. That's also a very bullheaded way to tackle this. So I'm not, I don't know if there even is you know, some conclusion or, or these are the three things you need to do to overcome. I don't mm -hmm. know if that exists, honestly. It really just comes down to people getting past these, these surface factors of identifying an individual and seeing them as, as the human that they are. Yeah. That's, that's a hard thing to, to do. Yeah. I mean, there, I don't think there's one answer as I know you don't think that way either but um i think what we're doing is a good first step because we might not reach all of korea but we're reaching you know a small portion of people 
Um, and I think as long as we keep the conversation going, who knows what platform we or even other people who share the similar viewpoint as us, who knows what kind of platforms we'll have mm-hmm. in the coming months, years, uh, to be able to speak and share how we feel mm. to Korean people. Yeah. And I just wanted to give one final word out, especially for um, our half Korean listeners or people who are living in Korea but don't speak Korean fluently yet or you just want to learn this language for your own personal reasons. Let it be that then. Let it be that you want to study Korean simply because you want to understand yourself better or you want to understand your family better, you want to connect with some culture or the society or your heritage better, let it be about that and not about how others are viewing you or the expectation they place on you to speak Korean fluently or not. Um, Because as we do know, language is not the end all to an individual and who they really are. But um, let it just just be encouraged because we've been there, we know how it feels and we also recognize the value of speaking your mother, quote unquote, quote unquote mother tongue well. Um, but make it about your own personal drive and why you want to do it. Not to appease others or prove something to the world. Because that can get tiring really fast. Uh, so yeah, so let that be a word of encouragement. Now, let me see. I, th- I think I have a, a listener mail. So, listener mail. This is uh, from an individual who was sending us an email, just in general, about our channel. And um, uh, she says, Hello, I just wanted to leave a comment and then thought I'd message you personally. I'm very happy to have discovered your channel. I'm not a halfy, not a cupel, but I lived four years in the US as a child and nine years in France. So out of 29 years, I've lived nearly half of my life abroad. Consequently, most of my friends are not only bilinguals, but trilinguals with more than two cultural backgrounds, and it's been great, but also isolating once I step out of the zone of diversity. I'm a semi-pro filmmaker and would love to explore more about cultural diversity in general because I feel it will become the norm in the near future. That, in my experience, is not always fun and enriching, but very confusing and even traumatizing at times. Anyways, thanks for the videos and hope to be in touch in person one day with the community. Thank you for that message you can thank you so much yeah um yeah it's very interesting to see how even people who are not mixed korean relate to a lot of the topics that we talk about because it, it is true as the world is becoming it's globalized everyone's diversifying it sounds like i'm talking about finances or something <laughs> but um y- you know something i've said before and you can re- see that in the youtube video of my lecture with the students from uh washington is that though this might not relate to you personally on a personal individual, I'm not half Korean, I don't care, what does that do with me? Uh, I can guarantee you at some point in your life, you will run across somebody who is mixed or two cultures or has dealt with some of these struggles that we talk about. And you having compassion and understanding, it, it, it not only broadens your own horizons and how you view people, but it will change the way you treat those around you. And um, this is about building a healthy community and society. And you have a part to play in that as well, whether you are mixed and have had these experiences or not. So um, it's very lovely to hear that from somebody who is not mixed Korean, but finding something to connect to. Well said. Thank you. Okay, now I'm really getting off my soapbox. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) climbing back down. Uh, All right. Well, thank you guys so much for the mail. We love listener mail, and you can always get in touch at thehappyproject at gmail.com. And we'd be always curious to hear your own thoughts. So get in touch if you're watching this on the YouTube channel. Leave a comment below. Share with your friends all of those good things. And we will catch you guys next time on the next episode. We are The Happy Project.